Hi there, welcome to the Electron X channel. I'm David Williams. In this video, I want to talk about series impedance and specifically, how do you calculate the equivalent impedance when you have a combination of inductors, capacitors, and resistors connected in series? So if I have some combination of components like I do here where I've got an inductor, a resistor, and a capacitor all in series, I may want to figure out what the total impedance is between the two endpoints here. So just like in DC circuits, Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law and even Ohm's law all apply when we're dealing with AC circuits. So again, just like as in a DC circuit, we can figure out what the equivalent impedances are when we have multiple resistors, inductors, and capacitors connected in series. So let's make this idea a little bit more abstract where I have three components that each have some kind of impedance. Let's call them Z1, Z2, and Z3. And these, these three devices are connected in series. So when they are connected in series, I know that the current through all of them is going to be the same. And we're dealing with AC here, so I'm going to put all of my voltages and currents as phasors. So the total current, call that IT, is going to be the same as the current through component one and the current through component two and the current through component three. I only have one path, so the current's going to be the same through all three of those paths. The voltage across each component is going to be its own individual value depending on the component value itself. And I'm going to denote these as Vz1, Vz2, and Vz3. And the total voltage across all three of those components I'm going to denote as Vt. Now according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, that total voltage is going to be equal to Vz1 plus Vz2 plus Vz3. And now if I break down each one of these voltages to be made up of the current and the impedance, the, the AC equivalent of Ohm's law, the total voltage is going to be equal to that total current times the total impedance. The voltage of component number one there can be equal to the current through component one times the impedance of of that particular component. Same thing for component two. And same thing for the voltage across component three. It will be the current through that component times the impedance of that component. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these currents are all the same. There's only one path for the current to go through. Therefore, the currents must all be equal to each other. So then if I divide each one of these expressions by the total current or by that, that same current, they will all cancel out. And so I get an expression showing the relationship between the total impedance and the impedance of each individual component. And so you can see that that total impedance is going to be equal to the sum of the three impedances. And at this point, it's, it's important to reiterate that these impedances all have a magnitude and a direction. And those magnitudes and directions can be indicated on this real and imaginary plane. Resistors are going to have a magnitude only in the real axis. Inductors will have a magnitude only in the imaginary axis in the positive direction. And capacitors will have a magnitude only in the imaginary axis but in the negative direction. However, when you have a combination of capacitors, inductors, and resistors, the magnitude could be in any direction. To get a better understanding of these series impedances, let's take a look at some concrete examples. In this first example here, I have two resistors that are in series with each other. One is 1,000 ohms, the other is 1,500 ohms. If I want to look at this in the real and imaginary plane, I can look at this sum as the sum of the two resistor vectors, which are both going to be, which are going to be in the same direction. I'll have 1,000 ohms plus 1,500 ohms. So this basically ends up as 1,000 plus 1,500, both in the same direction. So I can just add these as scalar numbers, and I get a total impedance of 2,500 ohms, all on the real axis. If I have two inductors that are in series, and let's say this one has a reactance of 1,000 ohms, and this second one has a reactance of 1,500 ohms. If I look at this on the real imaginary plane, these are all going to be imaginary values and I'll have a thousand ohms 
and 1500 ohms as the value and because these are in the imaginary direction I can indicate that they are in that imaginary direction by putting a J in front of them so the Z1 is equal to J 1000 ohms and Z2 is equal to J 1500 ohms so the total impedance then will be 1000 plus 1500 or J 2500 ohms so that's fairly straightforward so far but what happens when you have a combination of a resistor and an inductor so when I have a resistor and an inductor in series and I want to know what the total impedance is across those two devices let's say this resistor is a thousand ohms and this inductor is J 1500 ohms so if I'm drawing this out as the two vectors and I'm adding these two vectors together I have a thousand in the real direction plus 1500 in the imaginary direction and the sum and the total of those two is going to be that vector there now I need to take into consideration the direction it's still fairly straightforward especially if I'm if I'm writing this out in rectangular coordinates because I can just split up the real part and the imaginary part so that's total impedance is going to be a thousand plus J 1500 ohms and this form is is completely legitimate to leave in uh, it's just the rectangular coordinate representation of the total impedance but I could also represent this in polar coordinates so that total impedance is going to be equal to the magnitude of this line here that's going to be equal to a thousand squared plus fifteen hundred squared and the phase angle is going to be this phase angle right there and that phase angle can be determined by the inverse tan of the imaginary part over the real part and it's just a simple matter of plugging these numbers into my calculator and I get a value of 1803 ohms so that's the length of that line there with a phase angle of 56.3 degrees now what about if I have a resistor and a capacitor in series and I want to figure out what the total impedance is across those two devices so let's have this let's put the same magnitudes in for these so I have a thousand ohm resistor and a 1500 ohm capacitor and if I want to include the magnitude here I could say ZR is equal to a thousand ohms and ZC the impedance of that capacitor is equal to negative J 1500 ohms so in my real imaginary plane I have my thousand ohm resistor here and my capacitor has a value of 1500 in the negative direction so the total impedance is going to be that vector there so again in rectangular coordinates that total impedance is really simple it's just the value of the resistor minus J times the value of the capacitor I've written it in rectangular form there I could also write it in polar coordinates it's going to be the exact same value as my the previous example but this time with a negative phase angle so the magnitude will be 1803 ohms and the phase angle will be negative 56.3 degrees okay one more example this time I have a resistor a capacitor and an inductor all in series I have a thousand ohm resistor I have a hundred and six nanofarad capacitor and an 80 millihenry inductor the frequency of the AC signal that's being applied to this series combination of components is a thousand Hertz I need the frequency here because I'm only given the capacitance and the inductance and not the actual impedance of those two things so I need to convert the capacitance into the impedance so this impedance is going to be equal to negative J times 1 over 2 pi F C plug in a thousand for the frequency and 106 nanofarads for the capacitance and that gives me a value of negative J 1501 ohms for the inductor the impedance of that will be J times 2 pi F L again plug in a frequency of a thousand this time plug in the inductance which is 80 millihenries and I get a value of J 503 ohms in my real imaginary plane I can write out these vectors so I get a impedance for the capacitor as being 1501 ohms in the negative imaginary direction but then 
the impedance of the inductor cancels out some of that and goes back towards the positive direction, but not as far. And then I get a resistance of a thousand ohms that's going to be in the real plane or the real axis. So my total impedance will be that vector right there. So writing out in rectangular coordinates, I combine all of my real components, which is just that 1000 ohm resistor. And I combine all of my imaginary components, so imaginary impedances. So I get J times negative 1501 plus 503. So I have 1000 ohms in the real direction minus J times 998. And then of course I can convert this into polar coordinates as well. So that's going to be equal to the square root of 1000 squared times 998 squared, which gives me 1413 ohms with a phase angle of negative of the inverse tan of negative 998 over 1000, which gives me a phase angle of negative 44.9 degrees. So I hope this explanation plus these few examples that I've shown you gives you a better understanding of how to calculate series impedances. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.